Okay, so recently I have seen this animation showing the screen time of characters in Game of Thrones. And I was curious about how this animation was made. So I looked it up and it turns out that this animation is called a racing bar chart because it looks like the bars in the chart are racing against each other. And you can make this animation using a website called Flourish. So search Flourish app and this is the website that you want here and Flourish is a website that will let you upload your own data and then plot it and animate it in various different ways. If I go to the pricing tab here you can see that there is a free version and then there are also paid versions. The Racing bar chart animation is available in the free version. Just bear in mind, if you make a free account, then any data that you upload will become publicly available. An advantage of this is that the data for the Game of Thrones racing bar chart is already publicly available. If you search Flourish Game of Thrones, Thrones map, it will take you to this blog post here about how to make the Game of Thrones maps in Flourish. But if you scroll down, you will also find this racing bar chart here showing the character's screen times. And there's also a option to make your own. And that will open up the same animation in a different tab. And then in the corner here is the option to duplicate and edit it. And when you click this, this is when it will ask you to make your own account. So I just signed in using my Gmail account. And then you need to agree to the terms and conditions and the privacy policy and then register. And then I skipped this section. And this will open up a new copy of the racing bar chart, but this one will be a copy in your own account and it will start this step-by-step -step tour here showing you what different parts of the screen do. I'm just going to close this. And so now I have my own copy of this animation, but I also wanted to have a go at actually making it myself. So if I go to this little icon in the corner, I can select my projects and then it will open up my projects. And at the moment I just have one project, the one I just copied. But if I go to new visualization, I can make a new one and I will hold down control while clicking this to open it in a new tab. Then I'll scroll through the options that Flourish has and find this bar chart race down here. And it doesn't matter which starting point you choose. And this opens up another racing bar chart. This one here just has all of the default data in it, but up here there's an option for either preview or data. And if I click on data, it shows me a table with all of the numbers that go into making the animation. So my first step is going to be to copy the data that I need. So if I go back to my list of projects and open up this copy here, I can go to data on here as well. And then here is all of the numbers that I need. So if I click in one of these cells, I can then press Control A for select all to select everything, then Control C to copy, then go back to my other version, click in here somewhere, press Control A and then delete to get rid of everything that's already there, and then Control V to paste in 
the other data. And now I have all of the information I need. So I've got all of the characters, the house they're in, and then their screen time in each season in minutes. On the side here is the options for which columns form which part of the animation. So the label, a column containing the names of the bars. For me, I want this to be the characters, so that is going to be column A, so I'll leave that as it is. Then the values, multiple columns of numbers, each column representing a point in time. So this will be the seasons, and that goes from column C to column I. So I'll change these here to C-I. Then the categories, optional category column to color the bars. I want to color my bars based on the house the character is in. So I'll leave this as column B. And then the image is an optional column with URLs of images. And I don't want that, so I'm going to delete this and then just leave it blank. Now, if I go back to preview, you can see that the animation has changed. And we've got all of the characters and houses in here now. I'll also, while I'm here, rename this. So Game of Thrones Racing Archer. And then there are options for how this is displayed either using the whole width of the screen, what it will look like on a tablet, what it looks like on a mobile phone, or you can customize the view just by clicking and dragging it. I'll go back to full width. And then there are also options down the side to customize the way this looks. I'm not going to go into all of the possibilities, but if I go to the bars section, I can change the number of bars that show up. So at the moment there is 10, but I can increase this to 15 and get more bars here. Then in the labels and images options, I can change where the labels are positioned. So I can move them to the right instead. And this puts them at the end of the bar instead of on the side. And if I had images, they would now be on the Y axis here. And also the time counter is this text here, which is quite large. So I will decrease this a little bit to a size nine. Then in the colors options, there are actually lots of different palettes to choose from for the colors, but you can also customize the colors. So if I hover over the question mark here, it gives me a little bit more information. It says type the name of the entity whose color you want to set, a colon and then a color using either a name, a hex code or an RGB declaration. So I can type in here Stark and say I wanted to change all of the Stark bars to gray. I'll do colon and then gray, and I'll have to click off of this, and then it will update itself so all of these Starks are now in gray. I will leave the Lannisters as they are. I'm happy with this uh, sort of golden yellowy color. For the Targaryens, I will type in Targaryen, and then if I do a hashtag and then FF3333, this is an hex code and it will change the color to a sort of reddish color. Now I can also change the gray joys to be a dark sea green and that will change it to a green color. And then the only other one I want to change is the other category. And I can do this using an RGB code, so red, green, blue. 
and I'll make the red 150, the green 200, and then the blue 250. And if I click off of that, that changes all of the people who are from other houses to blue. And then the bar opacity down here changes the transparency of the bars. So they are at the moment slightly see-through. If I change it to zero, they will completely disappear. And one will be like not transparent at all. I'll change this back to 0 0.85. And then in the controls option, I can choose to show the replay button here, which you can use to play the animation. And I can also choose to show the sort control. So I can sort by lowest or highest. Then I have the option of either showing the legend up here or not showing a legend. And on the axes, I can change the colors of the axes. So the gray color is like the uh, lines down here. And I can have it be dynamic. So the size of the axes will change as the data changes, or I can have it be fixed. Now, these numbers here correspond to the data that was originally in this. They have nothing to do with the data I put in now. But fortunately, you can also uh, select a custom value if you want. Then the axes will be fixed in place and the bars will grow across the screen. I want it to be dynamic though. So I'll change that back. Then there's also the animation option. So if I choose to replay now, you can see it's actually going quite fast at the moment. This here is the duration in seconds of each timestamp. So I will slow this down a little bit to every three seconds. So as I have seven seasons in here, that makes my animation last 21 seconds. Then I also have an option for the number formatting. So if I want commas or decimal points in here, and there's also an option for what you want it to do if you have missing data anywhere, like if you want the bar to be removed or not. Then in the header section, I can add in a title. I'm just going to copy this from the other version that I have. So control C to copy and then back to here and control V to paste. Then I'll do it again for the subtitle, which I will copy and put in the subtitle box down here. Then I can also change the way this looks so I can make the main title bigger and then the subtitle smaller. And the space here is the amount of space between the title and the subtitle. And you can also customize this if you want. I'm gonna have it be nice and small. And you can also have a third layer of text underneath this. So if I type hello in here, it will just show up down here. I don't want that, so I'll just delete it. Then we also have an option for the footer. So you can show the source where your data comes from. So mine is the IMDB. And then I'll also copy the source URL from this version as well. And paste that in here. And now down here, I have the source and then a little link. And this is a hyperlink. So if I press control and click on it, it will open up the place where the data originally came from. And then down here, I can also add in a logo as well. So if I click on this, I can copy a image off of my computer. And then it's now down here in the corner, really small. So I'll make this a little bit bigger and to now have a little Game of Thrones logo at the bottom. I can also control the position of these 
to be either on the left or the right hand side. And there's also an option for alignment, so I can put them both in the middle or both on either side if I want. Now, if I close down the footer and the header, I can now open up the option for layout. And I can choose from a few different fonts on here for what font I want it to use. And also I can change the layout options so I can move the title, the subtitle and also the buttons to different places depending on how I want them to be positioned. Okay, and now I think I'm happy with all of the things that I've selected. So if I press replay, you can see the animation plays out and it's showing the um, screen time for all of the characters through each of the seasons. Okay, so in this video, I showed you how to make a racing bar chart animation using Flourish. And that is everything.